What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be looking over a bunch of submitted Shopify stores and letting you guys know what I would fix and really like how to make it as good as possible. Um, so I'm really sorry for the echo in advance. I just moved into this new apartment, um, which is kind of why I'm making like this video on my computer and like not really going all out um, with recording, but I'm super excited. I want to set up a little recording studio um, with obviously sound insulation um, and then like get a better camera, you know, a bunch of other stuff. But um, my YouTube video quality is really going to improve. I'm super excited for that. Um, so yeah, sorry again for the echo. I know it's annoying, but next video will be a lot better. All right, guys, let's go ahead and hop right into those store reviews. Okay, so before I start reviewing everyone's stores, um, I just want to like make a quick note and say that like everything that I'm about to criticize comes from a constructive standpoint. And um, I'm not trying to be mean to anyone. I'm literally just trying to help you out. I remember watching story views really helped me because you know, even if it wasn't my store, like it was the same mistakes that I was making. Um, and those really common mistakes can be fixed very, very easily. Let's go ahead and start off with the first store. Okay, so this is the first store that we're gonna be reviewing. I did go on this store earlier, um, and for that reason, I did not get a pop-up, but the first time I went on this store, I immediately got like two different pop-ups and then like a sales pop um, in the bottom of the screen. Um, so yeah, I would really, really recommend that you only use like pop-ups um, or at least the big ones that take up the whole screen. I would really recommend that you only use those for exit intent. See, there's another one. And I'm not saying the messenger pop-up is bad, but that's not the first thing that you want someone to see when they land on your website because it looks really scammy and most of the time people are just going to leave. Okay, so scrolling down, I can see that there's like a little typo there. I feel like there should be a space. Um, after that comma, I feel like there should be a space after that comma. I feel like that comma should be on that line. Um, I feel like there should be a space right there. I would really recommend like, I don't know. Personally, I'm not really a huge fan of like these categories considering you only have like one product in this one. Um, I mean, the others are all right, but really this is just like a super, super uh, general store like um, I kind of scrolled down and read this and it's supposed to be like a summer um, You know like summer apparel stuff like that um, But really this is just like a super general store and this is kind of what I started originally but um see, There's another pop-up like pop-ups are, are good in moderation um, But yeah, so I would really recommend um, that you don't start a super general store like this um, general stores are, are right to test products with, but when you're just doing like apparel or something else like that that's just incredibly saturated, um, it's just really, really hard. And when you have like 90 products or whatever, like it's super, um, it's super easy to get like overwhelmed and end up just not making any sales at all. That's probably going to be a consistent theme with a lot of other stores that I review. But um, anyway, that all aside, I would really recommend um, making sure that all of your products photos um, have a white background, or at least for the cover photo, which is what you would see um, when you're like looking at collections or something like that. I would also recommend that you not have every product on sale because um, if you are promoting like a certain product that's a certain percentage off, and people go on your website and look at your other products, then it's gonna make that sale seem less special. Okay, so I really don't recommend doing countdown timers anymore. Um, obviously, it's worth testing for your conversion rate, but um, personally, just a rule of thumb, I don't do countdown timers anymore. Um, I would also recommend that you like remove all the default overload description. Um, and I would also recommend that um, if you aren't going to have any reviews on any of your products, just go ahead and remove that app altogether. I believe this is looks. Yeah, this is looks. Um, 
so don't be paying money just to have no reviews. Um, either import some or just remove the app. Because I feel like it looks a lot worse when people see zero stars um, versus when people just don't see an option to review it. Um, in addition, I would recommend that you only have the subscribe bar um, like on the home page because you really don't want another call to action on the product page. Um, you really just want these call to actions. Another thing that I really recommend doing um, if you're the owner of the store is customizing the titles a lot more because they're just super basic um, and it really like it seems like people j could just find the same product somewhere else. So a trick that I like to do personally is kind of like um, give it your give like the product title like your own twist. Um, make it seem more branded. Like for example, instead of women's mesh splice slim black leggings, do like um, ultra soft legging butt boosters. I don't know, like it, that's obviously just a stupid example, but it really goes a long way if you customize your product title. The other thing that I do wanna say is that clothing is a very, very, probably the hardest niche uh, to get into. Plus you have a lot of problems drop shipping clothing from AliExpress, bunch of returns, um, Asian sizes are different. It's just not a good thing to start um, if you don't have a store already. All right, so the next store that we're gonna be talking about is called Odin's Beard Care. This is more of like a, like a brand. Um, I'm pretty sure they do all their like manufacturing in-house and it's definitely not like a drop shipping store or anything like that. So uh, the first thing that I see is um, our full range and all their glory The there. Um, that should be T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. Um, and then I would really recommend that you capitalize the first letter of each word. Um, that's just something that I always do in a title um, and I just think it looks a lot more professional. And then um, I also think that this slideshow is just like so massive. Like it's just weirdly sized and like there's different sized pictures, um, which is, it's not the best. So I would recommend doing like all the same size pictures and uh, maybe making it a little bit smaller. Um, that YouTube video is also massive. Um, and then in addition, I would recommend um, adding a comma after silicone, um, just to have the correct um, capitalization, I guess. I don't really know what it's called. Anyway, um, also in the footer, it says, we're here to help you with any questions you might have. Feel free to hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, or email. Um, in my opinion, it doesn't really look that professional. I would at least capitalize Instagram and Facebook and then I would add an apostrophe and the where. So um, I looked around a little bit, like I said before, and everything else looks pretty decent. Um, like I said with the other store, I do really, really like um, white backgrounds for product photos, which is great. But um, yeah, this is honestly like a really good example of a like branded website. Um, so I'll show you the beard oils. That's what I was looking at before. But um, look at the look at the description. Like compare this to the last description. You know, like this one highlights all the benefits of the product, and it, like they, you can tell that they really put some effort into selling you on this product, which is really what you want to go for. Um, you know, especially when you're selling a product like this, you can't just leave a default overlay description and expect people to buy stuff from you. Like you really got to sell to them. Um, so I would bold that, but really like this is, this is very, very good. Um, and then all the reviews look great. I'm sure they're legitimate because this is a real company. Um, and yeah, it overall just looks like a pretty good website with a couple typos. Um, and it's a good example of like a branded store. One thing that I do want to talk about though is that the Favicon or Favicon, I don't know what you call it, but anyway, the little icon 
um, is still the default Shopify one. And I would really recommend that you change that to your logo. And in addition, the prices are in pounds with no currency conversion. So um, if you do like sell to the United States or any other countries, I would really recommend that you do a currency converter, preferably with um, like, uh, like it automatically adjusts depending on where the customer is located. And then in addition, I would kind of recommend that you test 99 cent prices. Um, that's personally what I do. I do 99 or 95. Um, and 99 seems to work best for me, but obviously that doesn't make a huge difference. Anyway, um, I do think that 99 uh, cent price points would benefit you a lot more than whole dollars. But, um, you know, that's up to you to test. And I would just recommend that you do that as a general rule of thumb. All right, so getting on to the next store, I actually have not looked at this one at all. Um, and it really, it doesn't look like a drop shipping store at all, just like the last one. Um, so this looks like it's like um, enamel pens. So I can't imagine why they're 115 pounds, but um, this is, it's really interesting. This is definitely a different store. Uh, than what I'm used to like all these variants and stuff. That's like That's got to be expensive to code. Okay, so like customize. I got it. All right, so um Yeah, personally, I would just say that the mailing list bar is a bit like unnecessary um, If you're really trying to go hard on that then maybe but personally like I would just remove that and you probably see a higher conversion rate personally what I would do is um, I would replace this with a sticky add to cart button. That's what I have at the top of my screen. And whenever a customer scrolls past the add to cart, it's always there like staring them in the face. Um, and that really helps with my conversion rates. So um, your descriptions are very, very long, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But um, if you do end up having really long descriptions, then I would recommend testing out tab descriptions. Um, which basically means customers would have to like click something if they wanted to see like shipping information and stuff like that. And then just like the last store, it doesn't appear that there's any currency conversion. So if you do sell to, um, you know, like countries outside of the United Kingdom, then I'll recommend that you add a currency conversion app. In addition, I would recommend that you remove the power by Shopify in the bottom of the screen. Um, it's not a big deal, but it's super easy to do and it just makes you look a little bit more like a brand. In addition, I would recommend changing the cover photos of your product, um, at least making them a lot bigger just so that it's not like incredibly disproportionate to how big the, um, you know, the actual photo is. Alright, so the next website that we're going to review is, um, really different it almost appears like it's like Aliexpress or Amazon in the way that it's like you know a super general store that's like laid out in an interesting way I guess you could say um, but going back to the first store we reviewed I really recommend that you pick like you focus on a specific group of products like general stores are okay like I said but um Personally, I use those for testing like trending products and um, I don't really care what the rest of the site looks like. Like I just do basic themes and a super basic website and then I focus on making my product page look really good. Um, because you know, that's really mostly, mostly all that matters. It's not all that matters. But um, your product page and your actual product is really what you should be focusing on instead of adding like hundreds and hundreds of products and um, not making any sales on any of them. And of course, I don't know that, but um, you know, I would just recommend that you focus down on a specific group of products. Anyway, I kind of think it's like, this is a bit of a red flag to me. It says 700 plus clients love us. Um, and then it says 2000 plus successful deliveries. Um, it's really not a lot. Like, if I was a customer and they said that they only have 700 clients and 2,000 deliveries, 
then that would that would just seem weird to me especially considering there's a 1300 person difference between the amount of deliveries and the amount of clients that love them um but yeah anyway so let's go ahead and look at product pages as you can see there's a ton of categories but um it doesn't seem like many of them have like a lot of products in them like there may just be a couple products in a category um but wow so um the weird thing about this is like this says 13,787 but um you know there was just something on the home page that said there was only 2,000 successful deliveries um, but I kind of do like this right here. 96% of buyers enjoyed this product. 13,787 orders. Like that's really, really good social proof. And um, I kind of like the theme and the fact that the added card is right there and it has like, you know, trust badges and stuff like that right under it. They look very natural and not like, um, you know, like they're inserted in there by a drop shipper. <laughs> so, um, Wow, that's straight from AliExpress. Interesting. This really does remind me a lot of AliExpress. Um, but you really gotta work on the description. Like, that's just not gonna fly. When someone goes on your website, they wanna be sold on the product and they want all the benefits and all the features. And you really just gotta hook them in. Um, Cause the product description is huge and um, you can check out the video I made that's somewhere above my head that goes over my exact like script, I guess you could say, for writing product descriptions. One good thing is that they do have the size chart here. I know this is just for shoes, but um, if you are going to be selling clothing, which again, I don't recommend, then you need to have size charts because Asian sizes are a lot smaller than US sizes. So, um, when I actually sold clothing, which was very briefly, I would do like, I would order a small size from AliExpress and market as like an extra small for, you know, like my website. Uh, just because like I said, Asian sizes, like they tend to be a lot smaller. So it's really important to have size charts there just so that you're protected. And then again, I really, I, I would just, Try to focus in on a couple products. Um, you know, don't have everything on sale. I don't think they did. But um, brand your product titles and then work on your product descriptions. And then you could also benefit from having white backgrounds on all of your pictures. However, I do want to credit you for this theme because it's very unique. I don't think I've ever seen this before. And it honestly looks really good as far as branding goes. Like you did a great job of working the red in and like specific places and stuff like that. And um, you know, if I didn't know what drop shipping was, then I would probably think this was like a really big, like legitimate store. Um, you know, there were just those little discrepancies on the home page. All right guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I kind of just wanted to throw up a quick video because I know I didn't post last week. I know YouTube algorithm hates that. Uh, they don't like me anyway, it's all right. Um, but anyway, I'm really excited for, um, you know, getting some really high quality videos up soon. And um, I should also have some really cool interviews coming in September, which I am, I'm really excited about. So feel free to hit that big red subscribe button below. You guys have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.